Hey everyone, this is Mike from Comic Book Trove, back today with another omnibus review, and today I've got a first here for the channel because this is the first Conan the Barbarian omnibus that I've ever reviewed. In fact, it's the first Conan book that I've ever read, full stop. Um, so this is going to be uh, an interesting one to take a look at because I've just recently read through this over the last couple of weeks. And uh, what I'm going to do today is just showcase this book and flick through it as I discuss some of my thoughts, having had my first kind of exposure, first experience of reading the adventures of Conan. Uh, this is a character that I know that a lot of people have a lot of love for, and this run in particular is one that I know is highly regarded. So uh, without any further ado, let's start taking a look at the book itself. So this is um, an omnibus that is, sadly, I think out of print now. Um, I actually managed to pick it up uh, on eBay not long ago for a pretty good deal. So I thought I'd take a chance because I'd heard a lot of good things about it. I know this is a run that kind of got a lot of people into reading Conan comics. Um, but this was originally published by Dark Horse in the early 2000s. So written by Kurt Busiek and artwork primarily by Carrie Nord. Um, this was the DM dust cover for the Omnibus. Um, really cool image there. And on the back here, uh, get a bit of a blurb that tells us a bit about what's going on in the story. But this is kind of a, uh, well, what was at the time, a new reimagining of Conan's story from the beginning. Um, and the way that it's collected in this Omnibus is actually really quite interesting and something that you don't see very often in collected editions like this because rather than collecting all the issues um, in publication order, the issues are actually collected in chronological order in terms of the story, which is really cool to see. A good, uh, a good decision, I think, because I do think that it helps the story. Um, underneath the dust jacket, then, let's take a look at the hardcover itself. We have Conan here in that mighty warrior's pose, very cool. And on the back, we see the same image as was on the back of the dust cover. The spine as well, looking like that doesn't quite look the same as the other Conan omnibuses, which have a, a lighter colour um, for the background on the spine. This was a sort of a dark greyish colour. Makes it stand out from the others. Um, whether or not you like that or dislike it, I guess would be a personal preference. Um, but yes, yeah, so this material, and as I say, the first experience I've had reading Conan comic books. And I've got to tell you, right off the bat, before I really get into this and discuss anything in too much detail, um, I really loved it. This is a really good run. Um, I had a really great time reading it, and it was just something that I think because it was so different to what I've spent so much time reading with comics over the last few years, which has been primarily um, by far superhero comics. So to read something that isn't superhero comics and to, to read a character like Conan, who isn't uh, a pure and simple kind of good guy, um, he's really quite a morally grey, morally complex kind of character. Um, it was, it was a refreshing change. I think part, that might be partly why I enjoyed it as much as I did. But it was just really well written, fun, sword and sorcery, pulpy adventures. And that's really what Conan is, is all about from as far as I've been able to tell. Um, but I mentioned the mapping of the book then. So because it's not collected in publication order and it's rather in chronological order, you start with issue zero, but then you go to issue eight, 15, 23, 32, 45, 46, before looping back around and starting at Conan 1. So this first chunk of issues here, tell the origin of Conan growing up as a boy from birth into adulthood and then when you start here Conan 1 onwards for the rest of the book they are the stories of Conan once he has come of age and goes out into the world on adventures and uh, that's really from my from my point of view where the book really started to kick into high gear and from that point onwards um, just really great stuff but it was all strong material I really enjoyed quite a lot of it I will give a spoiler warning here in case I either mention something or show off something in the artwork that you don't want to see. I should probably also mention that there is a mature content warning on this book as well because it does have some strong language, violence, nudity, stuff like that, um, which might not be for everybody. So fair warning if, if any of that crops up as well. Um, but it all it's all told through this kind of framing device of this prince being told a story by his, his advisor or his vizier, I think he's called, um, telling old stories of Conan. So at this point, uh, they're reading stories of, of this past figure, this Conan guy. Um, they're reading of his exploits and then we're kind of seeing them. Obviously, the story transitions and we, we see those for ourselves and that's kind of how it's done. So periodically, you know, you go back to those two with this prince going, tell me another story of Conan, and then, you know, we go into the next story. And that's kind of how it's structured. But really cool stuff. This artwork, really unique by Carrie Nord. I think it's done in a in a very interesting way, as, as I understand it. I don't think it was really inked. It was just kind of penciled and then coloured, so that it gives off this almost kind of painted style. It almost looks like it's all just been painted. But uh, 
Very nice, very cool stuff. It makes for some really striking images at times, stuff like this, you know, these battle scenes, stuff like that. Really, really cool. Um, really enjoyed it. Gotta just tell you, it's a really fun, fun book, I think, as you go with Conan. What I liked so much about it um, was the fact that he just doesn't take, uh, <laughs> he just doesn't put up with anything from anybody, you know. He um, He's just not, uh, as I say, he's not like a normal kind of um, good guy, you know. He's not always going to do the right thing necessarily. He has selfish motives. Um, sometimes he's just a bit greedy and doing things purely for himself. But at the same time, he's not a villain because he does have a kind of, you know, code of honor. He does have morals and he will generally help out people in need. Um, but if anybody ever crosses him, you better believe he goes out of his way to track them down and make them pay. Uh, it's it's just kind of really badass stuff. Um, some great moments in here, some great stories. Uh, a lot of it is, is you know, adapted from uh, the Robert E. Howard stories, um, his original works. And a lot of these stories have been previously told before in comics as well. So a lot of these stuff, um, some of the stories in here, had already been told by Roy Thomas in the original Marvel comics, which had come years before this. Um, so this offered a fresh interpretation of those. But because I've read this first, and I do plan to go and read as much of the Marvel Conan stuff as I now can, because having kind of discovered Conan with this, or the comics version of Conan, I should say at least, um, this has really whet my appetite, and I want to go back now and, and read the stuff that came before, you know, the, the Barbarian original Marvel years, the Savage Sword stuff. Um, yeah, very much piqued my interest in, in reading a lot more of this kind of stuff. So it's something I definitely recommend, you know, if you've never read any Conan like me, and you're wondering how do you dip your toe into this world given how many omnibuses Marvel released over the last three or four years. I think they released something like 20 omnibuses. Um, it is quite daunting if you don't know where to jump in. Well, as far as I'm concerned, having just read it myself, this made for an excellent starting point. I didn't need any prior knowledge. This gives you everything you need in this book. Um, so yeah, overall, Definitely something I recommend. I mean, just looking through this artwork, really cool stuff. Just some really beautiful images in here. Um, oh, this is from the Tower of the Elephant story, which I really enjoyed. That was kind of one of the standout stories in here for me. Won't spoil exactly how it goes in case you don't know that story, but uh, uh, yeah, really good. Very memorable one, that one. The book does kind of end a little bit um, on a kind of cliffhanger. You don't get the most satisfying conclusion in this particular omnibus because um, this is from if you if you're watching this book uh, book review at all and you know anything about Conan even if you've never read it you probably know about the colossal Conan collection that Dark Horse released many years ago and is kind of notorious for being one of the hardest to find out of print books that there's probably ever been um, well this stuff all of this stuff that's in this omnibus is in that colossal Conan book and that Colossal Conan book has a bunch more stuff on top of this as well. Um, and that would collect the rest of what you're missing in here. But for the most part, um, this holds up really well without it feeling like it's missing too much, at least until kind of the very end. And obviously you're missing the rest of the series. Um, but it didn't ultimately negatively impact on my experience anywhere near enough for me to say that you know, it it, uh, it hindered anything. This is really, really good read, really strong read. In fact, probably one of the best omnibus reading experiences that I've had in quite a while. Um, honestly, really, really enjoyed this. Really had a really fun time dipping my toes into the world of Conan the Barbarian. And as I say, definitely planning to uh, to check out some more stuff. There's a few extras in the back here. Some quite cool stuff. I think one of them is actually the colossal Conan cover. Yeah, there it is. That's the front cover to um, the giant colossal Conan Dark Horse book. Um, so if you can get a, a copy of this, if you've managed to find it and you're interested in it, for what it's worth, I strongly do recommend it. I think it's really great stuff. And as I said at the beginning, you know, a refreshing change if you're anything like me and mostly collect and read superhero works. Well, this is this is something refreshingly different. But uh, that is that. Let me know what you think of this particular run, this omnibus, um, if you've read it before. As always, interested in hearing the thoughts of others, definitely let me know. Um, but thanks as always for watching, that's appreciated as always, and I'll be back again soon to discuss something else.